Hello, welcome to my channel. Welcome to my garage. This is Rick's Garage. In the last video of building the World War II Army trailer, and if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the descriptions below. Uh, I showed a 360 reveal of the completed model, as you can see here. And the only thing that was left to do was to attach the wheels and to weather it, which is what we're going to be doing in this video uh, today, uh, starting with the, uh, with the wheel wells. Now, as you watch this video, you'll notice that underneath the trailer where I made that uh, power modification, the, the power cable that connects from the truck to the trailer that would operate the trailer lights, I put some thin styrene uh, underneath uh, to act like uh, wire tidy or, or something that would secure the cable to the bottom of the trailer. And I didn't like the look of those styrenes. So I removed them and I replaced it with uh, 18 gauge wire, which I think, and hopefully you'll agree, they will they look a lot better than the, than the styrene strips that I used. So I just felt that the styrene strips just weren't making it. So anyway, uh, so with all that being said, uh, let's get right into the weathering of the World War II U.S. Army T3 trailer in 116 scale. Okay, so now I'm starting to weather the underside of the trailer. And as you can see, I've already done one wheel well. I thought it came out pretty nice. And I've also weathered up and rusted these supports right here. And I gave a little bit of weathering treatment to the leaf spring, as well as to the shock. So I'm going to show you how I did that. Now my plan overall for this trailer is not to muddy it up a lot uh, from the top side. The bottom, of course, is going to get a lot of dirt and grime and so forth as it's been dragged around fields and dirt roads and so on and so forth over time. So this is going to be a little bit more like the wheel well. Uh, and the top is going to be a little bit cleaner than the wheel well. And I'll get to the reasons why I'm going to do that la later on when I get to the top part of the trailer. But right now, I'm going to see if I can't show you how I achieved this look. I'm going to turn this around and zoom in just a little bit more. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some heavy earth uh, by ammo. And that's going to be my fixer. So I'm going to take a stiff brush and just paint on this uh, heavy mud all over the wheel well, just so that the other pigments that I'm going to apply is going to have something to adhere to. And I'm also going to apply some to the side as well. Okay, now that we got that on, I'm going to take some turned dirt. Again, this is from Ammo by MIG. Using the same brush. And I'm going to apply some of that as well. But only in just certain areas. You can see there's a slight color difference. And I'm just going to put it into just a couple of areas here. Again, this is also going to add our act as a fixer to the other pigments I'm going to be using. Then I'm going to take some turned earth. Again, this is from ammo. And this is going to have just a little bit more of a thickness. This is almost like mud. It has been plopped onto the, or, or sprayed onto the, under the truck or the trailer as it's been moving along. And I just, I'm just putting some in just, uh, just a few areas just to give it some different types of uh, color differences and hues and, and uh, coloring. And now we're going to start working on our dry pigments. And this one's going to be uh, dark earth. And I'm using the same brush. And this is a dry pigment. And all that wet pigment I put on, those uh, turned dirt and heavy earth and so on, going to act as a fixer so that the turned earth has something to adhere to. And this is all kind of going on wet and, and dark and everything. And it's going to dry a little bit lighter. It's going to dry in, into these colors here that, we're, that you're looking at here on the side that I've already done. I'm going to put some of this on. Okay, now 
I'm going to put on some European earth. This is a lighter earth. This is going to give it some look like some uh, dirt has dried under the wheel well. And we're going to blend all that in. This is all going to look different once it's dried. Okay, next I'm going to add some dark earth. This is a little bit darker in color and to give some contrast and show a little bit different type of dirt that the trailer has been dragged through. And you can see now how it's starting to, to look. It's starting to look a little bit like that almost. Okay, next I'm going to add a little bit of rust. Again, this is from Vallejo. Just put it into areas where rust would have kind of accumulated. I don't want to do a lot of it, just, just some in a couple of areas. And the more you kind of work it in, the better it will start to look to you, depending upon the look that you're looking for. Okay, now I'm going to add some new rust. This is from Vallejo. Give it a little bit of highlights to it. Okay, now I'm going to add some brown oxide, iron oxide. This again is from Vallejo. <clears throat> and it's going to create a little bit more of a darker rust, as you can see down and through here. That's where I've got that brown oxide is where you see that darker red. Just kind of work that in. And if you think you got too much, you can always go back with another pigment color. For example, if I don't like all that red in there, I can go back to the European earth and I can lighten that up a little bit. Like that. Okay, now that's essentially where I'm going to stop at this point, and I'm going to start working on the leaf springs. And as I start to work on the leaf springs, it's also going to add some pigments down in here that's going to improve or add a little bit more detail to the wheel well. And the first pigment I'm going to use is steel. This is a steel powder, and I'm going to take a new clean brush and put a little bit of steel powder onto the leaf springs. And you'll see how the steel powder is dripping down into the wheel well. Well, that's kind of sort of a good thing. And I also want to bring out some color of the, of the leaf spring to make it look like it's, it's metal. And if you think you got too much on there, which I, I have a little bit too much in this area here, that's going to be self-corrected as we apply some more pigments and rusting and dirt to the area. But this at least gives us a starting point. Just believe it or not, I had too much on this over here. And you can see how that was corrected. Now the base color I put onto the leaf spring was natal black. And I didn't put a lot of it on there. I more or less kind of dry brushed it or kind of between a dry brush and a wet brush. I didn't want to put a lot of black on there. I wanted a little bit of that green, uh, natal green to show up or olive drab to show up. Okay, so we got a little bit of that on there. Now next, because we have all the, now see how this powdering got in through there? Well, that is going to add to our 
weathering underneath here. So now we have some dirt and grime in there that's now accumulated into the wheel well. Okay, now the next thing that I'm going to do is going to, I'm going to work on the supports here. And I'm going to take some orderless thinner. And this is going to act as a fixer for the pigments to adhere to. And make sure you get into the inside area as well. I'm going to do it on the other side. Okay. Then I'm going to take some rust, and this is from Vallejo. I'm going to add just a little bit to the supports here. And then here in the back. And don't worry about if you're getting some on these supports right here, they're going to get rusted up anyway. At least that's what I'm going to do. Okay, then I'm going to take just a little bit of oxide, brown iron oxide. This is from Vallejo. I'm going to add just a little bit to the supports. Let's give it a little bit different type of rust color. And that's all there is to it. So now, I think I may have got a little bit too much in through here, which is not a problem. Again, we can just take some more pigments and just kind of lighten that up a little bit. This is European earth that I'm using. Okay, so now I'm also going to take a little bit of powder. This is a iron powder, and I'm going to apply this to the leaf springs. I'm going to take a new brush and take a little bit of this powder, kind of tone that down a little. I'm going to apply just a little bit of it to the shock down in through here, because that's both supposed to be bare metal. So not really painted. So giving it a metal kind of a look to it. Of course we get a little bit down there on the bottom, that's not a problem. That just gives the impression of metal underneath uh, the trailer. So now I'm going to take a little bit of light rust. Again, this is from Ammo. I'm going to apply a little bit of this uh, using a small brush around certain areas of the leaf spring where rust would have accumulated. Then I'm going to take a dry brush, kind of blend that in just a little bit. I'm also going to take a little bit of that light rust and put some down in the wheel well. And then I'm also going to apply it just a little bit underneath the, the edge here. I'm going to take a dry brush, blend that in. Okay, we're blending in through here. Now what I applied here is a little bit of iron, or excuse me, a little bit of metal polish. Just a very little bit. Okay, now you have your wheel well done. And then here's the other side. So basically I'm going to be uh, doing the same type of weathering on on the bottom here of the trailer the same almost the same way i did this maybe not as much uh, but these supports are going to be all rusted up and then there's going to be some dirt and grime on the uh, on the base down here and then also along the perimeter edges 
and along and through here. So uh, let me get the whole bottom done. I'll come back and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I completed the weathering on the underside of the trailer. And as you can see, I didn't do it as heavy on the underside here as I did under the wheel wells. But of all the pigments I used on the wheel wells, I added to the bottom of the trailer. And this is the end result. And I think it turned out pretty good. Okay, so now I've also have started weathering the sides of the trailer. And I'm going to weather the sides exactly the same way as I weathered the uh, truck. I'm not going to put a lot of uh, dirt and grime on the sides of the truck, but I am going to show some weathering to it. And I'm still in the process of doing this. And the same type of weathering that I did underneath the trailer, I'm going to um, add to the sides of the trailer. So, so far the only thing I've done is I brushed on some European earth and then I also applied a little bit of red oxide up here for the rusting and I also painted this right here in clear red. And I've started also rusting up the rope ties up here at the uh, underneath the trailer area. And here's the back. <clears throat> and then I'm also working on simultaneously on this side as well. So let me go ahead and get the sides done and then um, come back and show you what that looks like. I'm also starting to weather up the interior. As you can see that I've got some wear on these raised ridges, which is going to occur as the crew slides in and out of the uh, of, of the gear that's being thrown into the into the trailer and you can see that I've also done a little bit of scratching now the way I'm doing that is that I'm taking a, a spare piece of value gear this is just a, a box a resin box that I have not painted up yet and I'm just rubbing it across the sides here just as it would be in real life as you're sliding uh, gear in and out of the of the trailers and they're moving around and I'm also using a little bit of sandpaper. This is 180 grit sandpaper. And what I've begun to do is very gently just run the sandpaper along those ridges. And that's going to wear off some of that paint. And it's going to start to show some wear, as you can see right here. Now, I am going to add some uh, chipping and some scratches along the sides and on the uh, the bottom here of the trailer but um, right now I'm just trying to get the uh, the effect of paint being worn off as the the gear has been tossed in and out of the trailer and I'm taking a little bit of sandpaper here as well and doing it on the side here and just kind of very lightly moving it across the ridges and the raised areas of the trailer to simulate some scratches. So let me get all that done. I will come back and we'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I essentially have all the sides done except for the front of the trailer. And I'm going to see if I can't show you how I'm doing this again in terms of the weathering on the sides of this trailer. But all the sides are done except for this side here. And you'll notice that there's not a lot of red oxide that showed up on this side. There's a little bit over here and a little bit down on the bottom, but really not as much as I would like to see. So when that happens, I take some Vallejo red, German red brown and I dry brush very lightly in the areas that I want to see some of that of that uh, red oxide. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this brush. I'm going to see if I can do this on camera. And very lightly brush it around to see if I can't get some of that red oxide to show up. Okay, now once I've got the red oxide on there that I want, I'm going to take a little bit of European earth and I'm going to brush that all over the end of the, uh, the panel here, all over this panel. Okay, and in the same manner, 
I'm going to apply a little bit of light sienna, but not all over, just in certain areas. Just give it a little bit of a contrast of different type of dirt that the trailer has gone through and also matching what's also on the rest of the trailer. And then next, I'm going to apply a little bit of dark earth. Again, a little bit more contrast of dirt. Uh, but just to get a little bit more of a contrast of different colors of mud and dirt that have gone onto the trailer as it's been pulled around the fields and the dirty roads. It's just going to be in, in certain spots. Okay, now next I'm going to take a little bit of old rust and put it underneath the lip of the trailer up and through here, just right underneath that. Very lightly, but not all, our, all the way across, just in a couple of areas. Okay, so now you should be able to see the progress that's being made and how we're going to be matching almost basically what we have on the other side of the truck there. So the colors of the pigments that I'm using on the side of this is now being applied to the front right here. So I'm going to continue with uh, some more uh, pigment uh, weathering. I'm going to put a little bit more dark earth on there, a little bit more uh, light sienna, and we'll come back and I'll show you what that's going to look like. Okay, next I'm going to put just a little bit of orderless thinner on this hook right here. Then I'm going to take some rust, new rust from Vallejo, and kind of paint it right on the hook and on the backing as well. Don't worry about if it's getting onto the side of the truck because that can be taken care of by just a little bit of European earth to blend that in. Okay, and we'll let that dry and uh, possibly we'll add a little bit of red oxide to give it a little bit more of a rust contrast. But um, that's basically the uh, front of the trailer all done. Okay, so I've been working on the tub part of the trailer. And as you can see, I've sanded down some areas to create some scratches and some chips and wear. And this is all done by the sandpaper. And now I'm going to take a torn sponge and add some chips, chipping to it. So I'm going to just a little torn sponge here and just go through the trailer on the inside all around and create some chip, paint chips. A little bit here on the top and on the sides. You can see how the chipping is starting to form. I'll get that all in and we'll come back and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, next I'm going to take a little bit of olive drab and do the same technique with the with a sponge. And this is going to look as if parts of the paint has chipped off but has not gone all the way down to the bare metal and has not had time to rust. So I'm going to get that on. We'll go on to the next step. Okay, now I'm going to take a light rust wash from Vallejo and just apply it where all the scratches that I made with a sandpaper to give it a little bit of a rust look to it. I'm going to put that all around in this area here. The light rust wash kind of sort of blends in all those scratches that we made with the, the sandpaper. I'm going to get this all in. We'll go on to the next step. Okay, next I'm going to take a little bit of new rust from Vallejo using a stiff brush, a little bit bigger than the brush I had before. I'm going to put that 
over the areas where the scratches were made by the sandpaper. Okay, next in the center of it here, I'm applying some iron polish to get down to the metal of the of the trailer. Mostly in the center area because that's where a lot of the wear is really going to occur, but a little bit in the other areas too. Just to give it a look of metal has been exposed and all the paint has rubbed off, but really no real big rusting has occurred yet. Okay, now I'm applying a little bit of European earth to get some dirt inside the trailer. And I'll also be applying a little bit of dark earth and light sienna from Vallejo and Ammo by MIG. And here is the model all painted and weathered up. Given the problems building this with parts not fitting correctly, the poor instructions, and if you haven't seen my build video on the trailer, I'll put a link down in the uh, descriptions below. The best part of the build was painting and weathering. I really had a lot of fun weathering this model, and with that I highly recommend it. And if you have or are planning on building the 4x4 ton truck, this will be a great addition to your model. And this is how the trailer looks connected to the truck, as well as some value gear I painted and placed in the trailer. The only thing that I need to do now is to add figures, which I will be working on soon, so look forward to that video to hit the channel. Now, IXO has a 4x4 1 quarter ton Jeep available in 1 8 scale of die cast metal. It looks exactly like the model that you see here in plastic, but it's going to be in die cast and in 1 8 scale. And in this kit, it comes with an M2 machine gun, uh, it comes with a trailer and a 37 millimeter anti-tank gun. It has working lights, steering, uh, the wheels actually turn, and there is a removable windshield. And I also believe it comes with the option of a soft cloth top covering, as well as a cloth covering on the trailer. Now in the US, this kit goes for a little over $1,000, which includes the shipping. And I'll add a link in the descriptions below uh, that will take you directly to this kit. Now, from IXO, this is a, a full kit. This is not a monthly subscription that would normally take about 24 months or 12 months to build. You get the entire uh, kit, uh, the trailer, the, the gun, uh, the, the Jeep, everything, all the parts, everything that you need in one shipment. And for that $1,000 um, that, that this would actually cost you, uh, shipping is included. So I wanted to make that really, really super clear. And it does have a lot of electrics. The lights work and, and all that. So it's something that I plan on building. I don't know when, but I do have it on my list of builds to do. And if I do build it, I will put that on the channel. I really hope you enjoy this video. And, and the painting and the weathering I shared with you with, will help you with your build. and will inspire you for ideas of how to paint up and build your kit. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up because that really does help the channel. And if you haven't already subscribed, please remember to hit that subscribe button as that not only helps the channel, but will notify you of new videos that are posted on the channel. Other than that, always have fun in your garage, your workshop, or wherever it is you build your models. And until next time, thank you so much for watching.